So John, always good to have you in Abu Dhabi and Adipak. You have a long experience with this global platform. Tell me more about your experience at Adipak. So look, Adipak goes from strength to strength every year. I've been in Abu Dhabi, I lived in Abu Dhabi for 13, 14 years. I came in 2007. I've been at Adipak every year. It seems to just get busier and busier. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was was kind of like walking down Oxford Street. You could hardly move in certain parts of the conference. There's just so many people here. It's a fantastic place to network and have important discussions like the ones that we just had inside in the um, on the panel, you know, and it's great to meet up with people that, you know, that sometimes you maybe only meet once a year and network with them and find out what they're doing and what's working for them and share your kind of lessons learned that, uh, that we can all help each other as we, as we drive forward in the industry. The topic discussed at the panel was about retaining talents and attracting talents. What are the main challenges for that? Look, we're, you know, I mean, at Kent and, and, and with all the other companies, we're, you know, we're basically courageously tackling the greatest challenge of our time. So we want to attract the very best of engineers or any professions really into the industry to come and help us with that challenge to bring our world the energy, the energy that it needs, you know. You know, previously, I guess the fossil fuel industry or conventional energies had a bit of a bad PR. Um, but in my regard, in my, in my perspective or my opinion, there's no greater time to be involved in this industry to actually, to actually get on board with solving the problem and providing solutions as opposed to sitting outside it and throwing stones at the industry. You know, people want to be able to align their own personal goals with the purpose of the company. And it's really important that you spend a lot of time on that. Really dig deep. What's the reason for existence for our company and what type of culture do we want? And if you can actually provide a purpose where young graduates can align their own personal goals with the goals of the company, then really great things are possible. And that's what we need. We need great things to actually courageously tackle this this greatest challenge of our of our time which is climate change to responsibly continue to produce hydrocarbons in the areas of the globe where it should be whilst we build up the new energy system for the for the future let me share with our audience some numbers in 2023 the iea reported that energy employment reached nearly 67 million in 2022 with about 35 million in clean energy sectors and about 32 million in fossil fuel sectors. What could be the main, let's say, tray and skills needed for the future talents and jobs needed? Yeah, there are funny statistics, you know. I mean, what I say is that there's quite a lot of scaremongering about the new skills that are required for energy transition. But at Kent, we don't really see that. Apart from some very niche areas where we're doing concept studies or pre pre-feed studies for new technologies. But really, if you think about the low carbon side of energy transition, like carbon capture, all the different colors of hydrogen, really the skill set is the same. Um, the language is changing and the economics change. So you do need to actually upskill your people in terms of talking a different language and working in a different economic model. But an electrical engineer working on a refinery is no different to an electrical engineer working on a hydrogen plant. I mean, Kent has been involved in carbon capture projects for the past 20 years. Kent has been involved in building or designing hydrogen plants for the past 50 years. So these are not new technologies. There is a lot of scaremongering in the, in the kind of press, really, about new skills required, but it's not uh, to the extent that people say. dealing with the advanced technologies such as AI? Well, that's, uh, that, that's, that's a blessing. We, I mean, we're embracing that because, as, as I'd said to you previously, you had a slight PR issue where you had in certain parts of the globe, and, it's, and it is very regional, in certain parts of the globe where graduates would not want to go into conventional energies as a career path. But now with the advent of um, AI and, and the oil and gas business, the energy business, the low carbon business, the petrochemical business is ripe for artificial in intelligence. The, you know, the benefit that AI or generative AI can bring to those industries is enormous. So that attracts a whole new set of uh, graduates that want to be involved in that. And at Kent, I mean, you had at, at Edipec now, you have the AI um, uh, pavilion, mm -hmm. which we're also um, uh, have a stand. And we have a stand in the main, in the main hall, but also in the, in the AI pavilion. And the interest that we've gotten from graduates at our stand in the AI pavilion is enormous. And we've been forefronting, you know, the products that we're bringing to market at Kent in, in cooperation with our clients like Adnoc and Iram Aramco.